Happy birthday, America. The best way is to celebrate Independence Day in PSL just ahead. And happy birthday, PSL. Hear from residents celebrating the city's major milestone. And birthdays aren't the only thing we're celebrating. Find out what major national companies are coming to our jobs corridor. The agenda starts now. It's summertime in Florida, and what better way to enjoy it than to get outside and take it all in? Then the agenda is back. That's right, we're back, and not a moment too soon, Sarah. We have a lot to catch up on and a lot to look forward to. It's an exciting time in PSL as we finally move to put the pandemic in our rearview mirror. I can't wait. Let's take a look ahead. Freedom Fest is back. And we are very excited to celebrate Independence Day with you this year. The COVID-19 pandemic prompted the city to cancel this incredibly popular annual event last year, but we're making every effort to safely gather this year for one of Port St. Lucie's premier events. This traditional patriotic salute is free and open to the public outside the Mid Florida Event Center. Enjoy live music, food trucks, and of course, the Treasure Coast's best fireworks display starting at 9 p.m., weather permitting. The entertainment will begin at 4 p.m. with The Wildflowers, a Tom Petty tribute band taking the stage at 7.30. Do you have a little one eager to take the stage? Enter them into the Little Miss and Little Mr. Red, White and Blue pageant. We're looking for kids ages 3 to 10 with the most patriotic outfit. To enter, please email your submission by July 2nd. If you want to escape the summer heat and celebrate indoors, the Mid Florida Event Center is here for you. Make sure you grab a ticket for the 4th of July Ultimate Experience. You'll get the VIP treatment with a DJ tribute to the Stars and Stripes, a kid's zone with face painting and balloon artists, Blaze and Barbecue Buffet, and the complimentary signature cocktail, the Patriot. When the fireworks begin, you'll have a front row seat on the private terrace. Tickets are $30 for adults, $10 for kids aged 3 to 12, and 2 and younger are free. While the 4th will kick off our July events, our Parks and Recreation Department will offer reasons to get outdoors all month long as part of Parks and Recreation Month. Activities are planned for residents of all ages and abilities, including a photo contest, a free one-time participation in any of our programs, and a video gaming tournament. It's an initiative of the National Recreation and Park Association, and this year, we want to hear about your experiences and memories and stories about what parks and recreation means to you. The winner of our photo contest will receive a $100 gift card. Learn more about the photo contest and all the other special activities planned for Parks and Recreation Month at PSLParks.com. Parks and Recreation Summer Camp Program is also an extremely popular way for our younger residents to spend their free time. Camps are filling up fast, but more information can be found online at cdpsl.com camps. There's camps for all ages and interests, and there's even one geared towards our young golfers. Junior golf is now in session. Learn the game of golf with Arlen Bento Jr., who has been coaching junior golf players for over 20 years on the Treasure Coast. Despite the pandemic, economic development is booming in the city of Port St. Lucie. Over the past year, the city's Southern Grove Jobs Corridor has attracted several national companies that will bring hundreds of jobs, including FedEx and Cheney Brothers. Helping spur this job growth is a new project at the southern end of the Jobs Corridor called Legacy Park, developed by the Sandstone Group, which broke ground in April. It's my pleasure to welcome you all to the legacy and FedEx, the groundbreaking ceremony. The regional job corridor is now in full force. Today marks the day our tradition center for commerce truly becomes the long envisioned tradition jobs corridor. Four running miles, nothing like it anywhere along I-95. We now have a first class, class A developer to help spark even more job creation. Sandstone's really excited to be a part of the community here and, and the, the park when it's built out will be about 5.4 million square feet. Obviously employ thousands of, of people here from the community. These parks that are already ready to go, a company comes in and said, I need to be starting to build in three months. Getting through the permit process, getting through the site plan process, getting through the, the development process, getting through the funding process gets people to work faster. It helps to grow the economy. There's not a better city in the U.S. than Port St. Lucie to work with. They've been very cooperative, and, and the speed of this has been very has been incredible. I needed a facility that could serve all our facilities down in South Florida, and, and the convenience to the highway. 
I mean, it's right there. This location is really, really good for, for what we're looking to do. This facility will have the capacity to process 15,000 packages per hour to provide a faster service and more reliable FedEx ground service in the Port St. Lucie area and beyond. This development for us is far more than just a development. It is for us a way to continue our father's legacy. And let me tell you what the city did. They named a street after our father, Anthony F. Sansone Senior Boulevard. I think we'll have this development built out within a few years and finding the next uh, site here in, uh, in the county. We're, we're looking already and uh, we want to be here for a long time. Hands down, this is the best city that we have ever worked with and you all should be very, very proud of your representatives. And I want to thank you again for giving us the honor of keeping our father's legacy alive here in the community of Port St. Lucie. Thank you all very much. Southern Grove is a pretty active place right now. And if you want to learn more about the companies and jobs that will be coming to this area of tradition, please visit cityofpsl.com slash Southern Grove. And while we may be focused on Southern Grove, which represents Port St. Lucie's future, that didn't stop us from taking some time to honor its past as we celebrated PSL's 60th birthday in April. It's hard to believe just how different some of these major roadways used to look. What we now call Crosstown Parkway one time looked something like this. And Becker Road was once just a lonely street. When the city was incorporated in 1961, we had just about 200 residents. Today, we have more than 200,000. We've come a long way in a short amount of time, and we took one night to celebrate with about 500 of our closest friends. On behalf of the city of Port St. Lucie, we'd like to welcome everybody. Thanks for coming out. And this is really great. It's a nice night out. It's great to see this many people. It's great to see the enthusiasm and, and people having a good time. I think this is really good for the city. We're really proud to be here today. We had a lot of fun. There was a huge turnout. We wanted to do something really, really special for the 60th. We had lots of trivia contests online and live here. We found things that we didn't know we had before. And it was like, wow, this is really interesting. We also did scavenger hunt. I went and took photographs of 12 different spots in the city and gave people a hint of where it was. They had to go and take a photograph of the item. We came out, we had fun doing the scavenger hunt. We had a ball. So I'm really happy about this event and I wouldn't miss it for the world. I, I had it circled like six weeks ago. We had Keep Port St. Lucie beautiful, utility systems, the nice neighborhood showed up and wanted to promote our nice neighborhoods. Communications department, parks and recreation, the historical society, and then we had the Authentics, which were amazing 60s bands. I love this place, and uh, I call it home. I've called it home a long time. We're, we might be a young city, but we still have a lot of history here. Now, therefore, I, Gregory J. Orbeck, Mayor of the City of Port St. Lucie, Florida, do hereby proclaim today as the 60th anniversary day in Port St. Lucie and invite you to keep celebrating all year and join us in making this PSL's best year yet. Thank you for coming out, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being part of PSL. We love you, and we're looking forward to the future. Since we've been off the air due to the pandemic, we've had another exciting thing happen that we wanted to let you know about in case you missed it. The Florida Sports Hall of Fame moved to Port St. Lucie and opened in March at the Mid-Florida Event Center. The Hall of Fame recognizes and honors Florida's greatest sports figures and events and it promotes fitness awareness, education, and sports activities among our state's youth and adults. We think the Hall of Fame obviously is a great fit for our growing community and the event center and believe that the hall will be the first of many new attractions. The Florida Sports Hall of Fame is about inspiring lives. Inspiring lives not only for those who are inducted into the Hall of Fame for their accomplishments, but it's also about inspiring lives for Floridians, especially our youth. You can visit the Florida Sports Hall of Fame for free Wednesdays through Sundays from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Mid-Florida Event Center. On any typical drive across Port St. Lucie, residents and visitors will likely spy a piece of art just like that behind me. <laughs> That's largely thanks to PSL's public art program, which aims to beautify the city by bringing extraordinary art to everyday spaces, like inside a traffic roundabout or under a bridge. Whether it's a tile mosaic created by a Florida favorite Guy Harvey or a simple traffic cabinet wrapped with artwork, public art is fast becoming part of the city's landscape. In fact, with more than 160 utility cabinets wrapped with artwork spread across the city, it's hard not to see a piece of art while traveling around town. And that's a good thing. 
public art helps to uplift neighborhoods, create a sense of place, and establish community meeting spots. This year, the City Council adopted Port St. Lucie's first public art master plan. The plan sets the standard for implementing public art in Port St. Lucie, while also celebrating our community's ingenuity and artistic expressions. Don't worry, the art installed as part of the city's Art in Public Places program is funded by developers, not taxpayers. We've recently seen some incredible new pieces of art come to the city, from the sculpture in the roundabout at Selvitz and Bayshore titled Relate, to the beautiful sculpture along Becker Road near the veranda development called the Spinnakers, to a fun new installment at the Botanical Gardens called Imagine. There's certainly something for everyone to enjoy, and you can learn much more about these pieces and other public art in Port St. Lucie at cityofpsl.com slash public art. Well, this month's employee spotlight is certainly a familiar face, and while he was a PSL City employee for many years, most recently we've known him as our mayor. On June 30th, Mayor Orvec will be resigning to help lead the village of Isla Morada as its new city manager. He officially announced his plans at the June 14th City Council meeting. Thank you for allowing me to serve you as mayor. Thank you for helping in making the world a better place, starting right here in Port St. Lucie. The state of our city is at an all-time high. Our reputation has never been stronger. And most importantly, the vice mayor and city council, the city manager, city attorney, hardworking employees, and you, all of the passionate and involved citizens, the Port St. Luckies out there, will keep working hard, smart, and together to keep our community's incredible progress and our shared commitment to continuous improvement on track. We wish Mayor Orvec the best in this new opportunity. To use his favorite words, we'll continue to work hard, smart, and together to make sure PSL is the best it can be. We're out of time for this episode, but make sure you follow us on all of our major social media platforms for constant updates on what's happening in your hometown. And if you have any questions about the topics covered in this episode, just visit the city's website at cityofpsl.com. I'm Sarah Prohaska. And I'm Benjamin Elliott. See, See you, you next time. time.